Hello guys, um, so this is going to be another redstone video. In this case, it'll be a redstone tutorial. Uh, I actually recorded a half an hour tutorial on something different, and then I found out the hard way that my screen recorder doesn't record full screen games properly, so I lost all of that footage. So instead, we're going to be doing something a little shorter. So let's come into our test world here, where I have all my redstone testing and other testing. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a multi-input AND gate. Uh, now what does that mean? So let me just come to a nice blank area here. Okay, so an AND gate means that if you have two inputs or more, they all have to be on. And a chicken just walks into the frame. Uh, they all have to be on for the output to be on. So for example, you want uh, two levers to have to be switched on in order to open a door or something. And so for that, the usual two input AND gate in Minecraft goes a little something like this. So you put three blocks down, any opaque blocks. You put a redstone torch on these two with redstone dust in the middle and you'd put a redstone torch on the side of the middle block and that's pretty much it so your output is here and your input goes into these blocks so you will notice uh, for example if I grab some levers levers, levers, however you want to say it uh, if I put a lever here and here, if they're both off, the output is off. Um, but if I turn this one on, the output is still off. But if I turn this one on, the output is still off. But the key is if they're both on, then their output is on. So if input 1 and input 2 are both on, the output is on. Uh, so that's an AND gate. That's a simple uh, two-input AND gate, most common design. But what happens if you want to test for more than two things? Let's say I wanted to test three or five or ten inputs and make sure they're all on before I get an output. Um, with this design, you can't just extend it in any easy way. So, for example, if I were to do something like this, and put some redstone there nothing happens now what I could do if I wanted to extend it is I could actually <clears throat> sorry I could actually put an output there and then use these two and then build another AND gate here with those two inputs and that would work the problem is it gets very big very fast because you'll notice already we have for three inputs we have a one two three four five block wide uh, area here and as it goes out you need to add another at least one more block here so if I even get rid of this redstone suddenly it extends everything by two um, for each additional input which is just it gets really big but there's a much uh, more compact and efficient way that's extremely extensible with that, uh, without much addition um, for multiple input AND gates and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'll just leave that there. I was thinking about destroying it but I'll leave it alone. So um, actually I'm going to show you a little bit of the principle behind this in case it's not obvious. So obviously this is not needed. Okay, so the way this works is redstone torches act like inverters, meaning if the signal is on into a block with a redstone torch, the torch will be off, and if a signal is off, then the torch will be on. But that only applies to a torch connected to a block. If a torch is sitting there next to redstone, it will just directly power the redstone if it's on, as you can see there. So that's a key property here. So what happens is, if either of these two inputs are off, 
their redstone torch for that input will be turned on as an inversion and that will power this redstone block so either of these are uh, will power this redstone because it um, they're both right next to it instead of uh, on a block next to it which would invert it so these two will power that and then that redstone will power this block that it's on and as we said a redstone torch in a block inverts the power of the block so if this is powered uh, if this dust is powered it powers the block which depowers the torch and turns off your input or your output um, so the end result is if either of these two are off this redstone gets turned on and then uh, this torch gets turned off and your output is off otherwise if they're both true or both on your output is on so that's the principle behind that so let's see if we can extend uh, our inputs based on that principle so we know that we want um, some kind of inverted torch from our signals from our inputs to power some redstone dust but we want it to be more than just two. And in this case, it only works with two because we have the redstone dust between the two torches. So is there a better way that we can check for redstone torch power in a long line of inputs of arbitrary length? And the answer is yes. And the way we do that is by using the power of the torches not to go uh, horizontally next to the torch, but to go up through a block above it. So, oops, wrong thing. So if we have our inputs here, uh, and the great thing about this is you could even, if you wanted to, put your inputs right next to each other. Um, the only problem with that is that the lines leading into your inputs then get a little bit complicated because they can cross talk a lot and short circuit. So I will separate that a little bit. Um, but let's say we have the two inputs here and as usual for this demo, I'm just going to use levers for the input. So lever one, lever two. So there's the two inputs, right? And as we know, we can turn each one on or off and it's fine. But instead of having the redstone here, we want the power of these torches to go up through a line of blocks above it. So let's do that this way. So we have these blocks, and we make this all a single line of redstone. And you'll notice those torches are powering the redstone dust through the block. And now if we turn that off, the line is still powered because of that torch. And if we turn this on, the line is still powered because of the other torch. And only if we turn them both on, does the line get turned off? Just like that little piece of redstone dust in the middle of the original AND gate, only now it's on the top. And the importance of that is that because it's on the top, we can extend this as long as we want. And just say I wanted three inputs. I could do this. Uh, close enough. I could do this. Put some redstone here. And say I wanted four inputs. I could do this with some redstone dust here and of course we still need to place all of our inverters underneath but that's as simple as adding two blocks and a torch and then for this fourth one two blocks and a torch all right so I'm just gonna do the demo with four inputs now on our two input uh, and gate our powered uh, redstone dust turned off this torch and we need that inversion for our output to be correct so in this we can't really just stick a torch on the back I mean technically we could just stick a torch here um, the same way it is on the two input and gate but the thing is if you'll notice this whole gate is one block wide except for the inputs, but the actual gate itself is one block wide. If we put a uh, torch like that, um, then what we end up having to do to get the output is something like this, with the redstone here. 
And so now all of a sudden this one block wide gate becomes three blocks wide. Uh, and that's important because a lot of times you'll have more complex redstone contraptions and you want them to fit in as small a space as possible. You want them to be able to be stacked next to each other as best as possible. So the smaller it is in one dimension, the easier it'll be to stack without interfering with other components. So, with that in mind, we don't need to uh, put the redstone torch over here. We can actually keep the redstone torch on the same axis uh, by putting it right, right here. And then we can put it up out and down and so now we can grab our output from our torch just wherever so let's say on the same axis right here so now we have the entire AND gate one block wide with four inputs although there's actually no input to the gate right now so let me just add that so we have all four inputs ready and then give our levers, levers, whatever. And so now, as you can see, the output is off because these two inputs are off. If we turn all the inputs on, then suddenly we have an output. And that is the only way we will get an output is if all of the inputs are on. So, as I said before, I could always add five or six or 10 or 20 gates or 20 inputs for this gate. Uh, all I'd have to do is add more torches for the inputs, more inverters, and then extra blocks for the redstone line. The one thing you do have to keep in mind is redstone can only travel 15 blocks. So if you want your gate to work properly, every 15 blocks up here uh, or less, you want to put a repeater on, an, on a block above where there is no torch, um, just to make sure the signal stays strong. Uh, if you didn't do that, for example, and you had more than 15 blocks here, which would be like 7 uh, inputs, 7 to 8 inputs, uh, then if the last input were off, you would still get an output, even though it shouldn't, um, which is not good. So you, you know, in order to make sure it correctly reads all the inputs, uh, in every case, you need to make sure there's less than 15 uh, lines of uh, redstone uh, before putting a repeater in. But because we have repeaters, it's not really too big a deal. You just gotta make sure you remember to do that. So now that's the basic multi-input AND gate or multi-AND gate. Um, but what could this be used for? Um, in most um, binary logic in computers, a two input AND gate is all you need. Um, so that's why the two input is the most common design. But there are actually many uses uh, for multi input AND gates. And for example, one is something that I've used recently in an adventure map I released, a very small adventure map. It was my first release. Um, and that is a combination lock. So, for example, if I want, let's see, I have four inputs here. If I want just the second and fourth input to have to be on in order to unlock a door, right? For example, a piston door, oops, I didn't mean to turn that. Uh, for example, a piston door, or just for the sake of demonstration, just an iron door right here. Um, so now, as you can see, if I just turn them all on, the door opens, right? But we don't want them all on, we want a certain combination of them on. And we want to make sure that the ones that are not supposed to be on are not. So the easiest way to do that is to use a multi-AND gate and just put an inverter uh, coming out of the inputs that you want to be off and then you're done so for example if I just want this second and fourth output to be on as my combination I would come here and 
make this an inverter instead of just redstone. So let's put a lever there and a torch here to make it an inverter. And then I would do the same thing for this one because I want this one to be off. So block, torch, and lever. And so now the key is that uh, if you look, all of these are off now, and there's no uh, there's no output, so the door is closed. If I turn these two on, suddenly the door opens. But if I turn these off, or if I turn these on, I should say, then their inputs turn off and the door closes again. So this is a combination lock design that uses this multi-and, and because it uses this very extensible multi-and gate, the combination lock is extremely extensible as well. You can include as many, um, uh, as many inputs, as many levers as you want, and then just extend it out and lead the lever lines into there, and then behind the scenes you just put an inverter. Uh, on all of the lines that you want to be off and just redstone with no inverter on all the lines you want to be on and you've programmed a combination lock and of course if it's like this it's easy to see the difference but if I were to for example put this behind a wall so that they all had levers on them Right? And if this whole thing were behind a wall, you wouldn't be able to see the gate, which is obviously how you hide all your redstone, and you'd have no idea if you had a player walk into a room where all of these were off, they'd have no idea what the combination was. Um, so I actually did this in an adventure map of mine where I had each lever labeled with a number, uh, one through five, or was it one through six? Uh, I think it was one through five. And there was a certain combination of numbers that needed to be on in order to open a door. Uh, and so as uh, I said, there were five combinations there, there's four here, but this is as extensible as you need it to be. Just keep adding more to that line and you're golden. So that is the multi-and gate along with a practical example of it in a combination lock design. Until next time, keep redstoning.